Hi, everybody. Um, we've had some special requests lately to take you along on some of our caterpillar finding adventures. So we're going to try this out. Uh, it's a first for us. Um, I thought we'd start off with a favorite springtime uh, quest of mine, which is to go to a New England bog, find some purple pitcher plants, and hopefully uncover some of the uh, little known purple pitcher plant looper moth caterpillars. They um, overwinter as caterpillars. They should be in the pitchers right now. And um, I hope we'll have some luck. So see you in the bog, guys. So we're going into a local bog, um, sort of our secret little bog, uh, to find pitcher plants and see if we can find the signs of these caterpillars and maybe one of them um, starting to wake up and feed on the inside of a pitcher. Um, we're gonna bring you along with us for the ride. Um, just a note that bogs are delicate environments. So if you're in a public bog, stick to the boardwalks. And if you have your own secret bog, uh, make sure you try and leave as little impact and stay to, you know, one little trail through the area um, if you can. All right. Um, so I'm here with Courtney and Sarah, and we're about to dive in. Um, I'm sure everything has melted now, so we're probably going to get a bit wet trying to find these caterpillars. Our first attempt was a little uh, misguided. We went to the wrong entry point of the bog, and it was wet, and I almost fell in. But now we are in the right spot. Um, this is the way we normally come in. So this is officially the beginning of our adventure. I'm not quite sure where I'm going. Ah! Yeah, I got glass in my rain boots. So I can't use them. How are you guys doing here? Delightful. Yeah. Ah! <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Her superhero name is Kaka. <laughs> Mine is Venom Vixen. <laughs> Together, we are the larval asses. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. We got to be careful with the. Uh, we're gonna have to beep that out, I think. <laughs> we're totally gonna have to beep. Do you that. have a wet sock? Yeah. All right, Courtney great. wins the wet sock award Woo! here. All right, guys. So for a little natural history addition here to all the trauma and chaos, uh, we're surrounded by high bush blueberry, which buds out very early. You can see the swollen buds here. Even in March in New England, there are already caterpillars that are going to be feeding on these buds. Most of them are noctuids, cutworm-like caterpillars that come up at night. There's also overwintering geometrids or inchworms that'll be feeding on these. Um, a night hike flashlight, looking at buds like this, great way to find your first caterpillars of the year. All right, we've got our first purple pitcher plants here. So this is the plant that um, is the food of Xyrafax, the purple pitcher plant caterpillar or looper. Um, Luckily, we're not just looking for the plants. The caterpillars do something with the plants that let us know they're there. They're going to tie the opening closed and make a little balloon to live in and feed in and spend the winter in. Uh, we'll make sure to highlight that little balloon if we end up finding them. Um, the pictures are all along this entry trail and out in the bog, so we'll look at a lot of those. So here's a picture up close. And uh, this is really one of the first ones we've encountered in the bog, and we already have evidence of our caterpillar. So this is a normal picture here, probably the end of last year's. Over here we've got some really old pictures, but right here we have a picture that has been altered. The top has been tied closed by silk, it's been made into a balloon, and the inside has been skeletonized. The caterpillar that did this actually ate the inside tissue um, that's why it's all brown there. Uh, to me, it doesn't look like there's anything fresh enough, and given that there's a hole in here, to me it looks like there won't be a caterpillar in here, but we'll investigate this further before we're done. Yeah, let me show you. This, is, this is the classic balloon here, yeah. guys. So what you want to look for is some suggestion that there's already been feeding. So do you see where it looks maybe like a little fresher there? Yep. But I think you'd find more of that. Um, and any holes like this suggest that a predator has gotten in there. Um, but by the way, if you are doing this, you never want to pick the whole plant just to find out if there's a caterpillar in there. You can easily just take one leaf here. A lot of water in there. So there's Ooh, old frass. frass. So that's old caterpillar poop. and. That actually looks like a moldy dead caterpillar right Yay! there. So that's the unsuccessful remnants of Xyrafax, the pitcher plant looper. Womp womp. Hopefully we'll find more than a moldy caterpillar to show you by the end of this. Made it to the open bog here with our spruce and our larch and Courtney, who is looking for some pitcher plants out in the open. We're finding most of the pitcher plants are actually back where Sarah is here in the shadier areas, and she's found another balloon oh, or another caterpillar it. shelter. So we're gonna take a look at this one here. 
Um, Sarah has found a pitcher that is fully tied into a balloon, so the entry has been closed. Um, there's no holes where a predator could have got in. And when we held it up to the sun, let's try this. You could see where it's been skeletonized pretty recently there. You can see the thinner tissue and even some frass. And I can't really see this on the film here, but you can actually see with your eyes where there might be a caterpillar sitting. So we're gonna open this up and see if we can find the caterpillar. You can see already old caterpillar poop, frass. So the caterpillar was feeding in here. Oh no, so <laughs> the shadow that we saw um, was the caterpillar, but it was the dead body of the caterpillar rotted against the side oh. of the oh. pitcher. It is not easy to get through a winter. Um, all these overwintering caterpillars, we find a lot of dead ones out there. They don't all survive this. Um, we're gonna have to find one of these, right? I mean, we can't do this whole thing and then not find one. We'll find one. These bogs are really just such beautiful places. I mean, overall, sure, but these details of moss and pitcher plants, reds and greens, even early in the spring, they're just lovely. I hope we'll get back here a number of times over the year. Still looking for these pitcher plant um, balloons, but uh, you know, one thing about having a mission like this is we go out in search of something, it doesn't really matter in the end if we find it. It's just a method to get outside and enjoy spaces we might not otherwise think to go to. A little extra push. Um, I think that's one of the great things about bird watching and, and other natural history pursuits is it doesn't really matter what you end up finding. You just get out into the world and discover new things. So we're gonna open this up and bring it up to you. You should be able to get within about a foot. Your camera is so much better than mine. Okay, so we're very careful to not drop it. You know, if there's a caterpillar in here, we are gonna need to take care of it after we open it. Lots of frass in here, continuing. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Hey, oh, hey, friend. Can you see him? Yeah. I'm not expecting to get the best looks, but that is yeah. it. That's the Xyrofax. That's the purple pitcher plant looper, a specialist on pitcher plants. Um, really cool little caterpillar. The moth is beautiful. Very local, just in bogs. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is why we do this. It's fun to really see these things that few people know about. Um, Ooh, I can't wait to get this under the microscope and show everybody really up close. There he is. The season. So I'm going to take this little guy home and we're going to get to see it under the microscope. Aha, success. Let's see what else we can find. Um, I'm trying to tell people about what all these different bog plants are going on about leather leaf and such things. Um, Sarah tells me this is a, um, a bog rosemary. Is that right? Mm -hmm. It's not actual rosemary though. That's just a common name. I oh, okay. It doesn't smell at all like rosemary. But, um, you know, this is as important a part of hunting for caterpillars as actually looking for caterpillars is knowing your plants. So whatever this is here, I want to know what family it is, um, what caterpillars might specialize on it, so I can actually know, you know, what I'm looking for. Um, you know, I couldn't go out into the broader world looking for a purple pitcher plant caterpillar without knowing what a uh, purple pitcher plant was, right? But. Uh, definitely might want to come back here and use a tool like iNaturalist or come with a local botanist and learn more about these plants. So have we, have we talked about what's inside of one of these pitcher plants? No, we, we can start here. Um, we should also, in the microscope, we'll mm -hmm. see those backward facing hairs. Why don't you take that away with the... Well, with these? I, I think probably the most important misconception that I had starting out was that there was oh. some sort of like digestive fluid inside of one of these, but it's really just rainwater. So these aren't Oh active. really? They yeah. don't have yeah. uh, any kind of enzymes? No, in uh, not this species. They're oh. just filtering out rainwater, but they do have symbiotic or people say symbiotic microbes that are yeah. then breaking down all the stuff that dissolves inside of the so rainwater. So it's still in a sense digesting, it's mm -hmm. just not by putting out any kind of Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That was we did a whole dissection in a sustainability course that I took and it was huh. really informative. I like how they physically trap things. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not just a hollow tube, yeah. but if you look really closely, do you want to sort of present you can, yeah, that? Yeah, you can see the hairs. You can? Oh mm -hmm. yeah. These backward facing, very smooth hairs that make it impossible for most insects to get back out mm -hmm. of the pitcher again once they're in. Um, so no mechanism that slams shut, nothing that's uh, sort of active, but those hairs and the shape of the pitcher and the way the light works um, keeps most mm -hmm. insects that go in from ever getting out again. This is fun, guys. I mean, 
I don't know how this is going to turn out on our first try, but this is cool stuff to share. Um, so thank you. Getting some scenic fog shots. There's some little squirmy dudes in here. Oh yeah, there are things that swim around and live inside the yeah, water too. Yeah, see that right there? Yep, yeah, that's a, looks like a fly larva of some sort. There's some frass, it's pretty small. Ooh, we're getting more frass. Oh, that's a lot. I was worried at first that there wasn't any. Well, he's running out of room down here, so. Oh, there he is. Hey! Oh, and it is bigger. I think that's the a, chunkster. let me just see him for a second. Yeah, that's the next instar. So this one's whoop, been whoop. feeding and has already shed its skin one more time than the others. That explains um, it. Woo. All right, so I want to explain um, again what we're doing with these guys. So we're going to be taking these back to the lab where we can continue to feed them. If we tried to put them back just on a pitcher, it's unlikely that they'd be making their home again. We have disturbed them to a point that would affect their survival if we left them. We're going to raise them inside. We'll photograph them. Um, if we have an opportunity to take them to an outreach program, we'll teach about this environment and the caterpillars. Um, and then, assuming we get a moth rather than any number of parasitic wasps and flies, um, we'll be able to release them again um, in the end. You know, we probably couldn't much in the way of negatively affect the population by collecting these and even keeping them, but the lab's philosophy is just not to be wasteful, so we might as well get them back outside again at the end of the, at the, end of the project. Um, all right, so just try and keep to the same trails that we entered in on. So you can sort of see how we came in. It's sort of a mixed, uh, mixed issue because if you take the same trail every single time, then you'll kill that area. You're gonna, it's gonna get wetter, it'll become a stream. So you wanna do a mix of like on any given trip, trying to limit how much stuff you're crushing with your feet. But over the long period of time, you don't wanna end up swamping a certain area. So you just sort of take a different route in here and a different route in there. Don't swamp the swamp. And all of that changes if these places become popular mm -hmm. and whole school classrooms are coming in here. Then you need to start advocating for like a boardwalk or some mechanism to keep from destroying the habitat. This is our bog, find your own. <laughs> of, of what gets a little chaotic here. It's gonna be great. It's always, the hardest part is always getting in and out of the bog, not walking around in it. launch yourself on the other shore. Okay. Ah! We're experts and we make everything look easy and right. elegant. <laughs> Pretty sure I got my finger in the shot too, so. Oh good, yeah. Yeah, All extra right. good. So, <laughs> only part of the outdoor experience is finding the creature you're looking for. This is what it's really about. Come on guys, yeah, you can move now. <laughs> That was just very coordinated. You both moved at the same time. We planned it. I'd say one of the most satisfying things about opening the Caterpillar Lab is being able to drag employees and interns and people into uh, very right. difficult environments. Although I'll Long say with trip. you two, there's no dragging involved here. Oh, no. I'm getting paid to go do what I would normally be doing. <laughs> We're back at the lab. Uh, we do a lot of indoor outdoor back and forth exploring things using our tools like microscopes that we found outside. So here's one of our uh, pitchers. This is the host material to feed our caterpillars and we're just putting this under our, our microscope here to take a close look at it. So this is the inside of the pitcher and you can see all these backward facing hairs. That's one of the ways that the pitcher makes sure that insects that go into it can't get back out again. Let me get the focus here. There we go. So they go in, the hairs sort of slide them down and then they can't retreat back up. You guys like to see the looper? We'd love to. Why, thank you, Courtney. Let's see. <laughs> All right, so here's our, um, here are two of the loopers we found. One is out and walking around, but here's one that's still in its little bit of pitcher. So for our first look, And here it is. This oh. is the purple pitcher plant looper caterpillar, Xyrofax. Purple colored, sort of soft looking. It's got little hairs all over its body. Um, and this will be a middle instar. So it's already shed a number of times since it hatched last fall. It's already eaten a little bit, um, but it's got quite a bit of growth to go through yet. Um, here's the head capsule. 
And you know, this may not be the most strikingly beautiful caterpillar of them all, but part of the fun here is that this really is a highly specialized animal. Not only does it just eat pitcher plants, but it knows just how to work with them, close them off, make itself some shelter, drain the fluids from the bottom so it has somewhere to live, and overwinter in there. I'll just go to the menu here, get the exposure right up to the top. The anal pearl eggs are weird. Um, they're a little extended. So loopers are noctuids that have reduced pro legs. So they have the anal pro legs or the last set, and oh. then they have um, two abdominal, uh, two sets of abdominal pro legs. So fewer than most noctuids, which would have four. They look less weird now, now that they're tucked underneath. I mean, they're a pretty weird looking caterpillar with these lobes. They are very strange. But on the southern version, those lobes extend out oh, into they're making friends. tentacles. Um, have you seen pictures of those yet? No. They're really cool. Um, I don't think making friends is... They're making In fact, these are... Friends. Some loopers are oh. known to be Oh, <laughs> they are not friends. So. <laughs> All right, so, um, guys, we need to set these up. So we'll get um, a medium clear Tupperware like we've been using. Um, and we can take our, our good pitchers here, maybe slice them in half, um, and you can make two or even three or four different little menus out of this for the caterpillars. Um, menus. menus. Is that weird? I don't no, know. I yeah. love it. Sometimes I lose track of what's weird around here. Look at the little... These are images that we took last season when we went out and we gathered some pitcher plant caterpillars and got to rear them for the first time in the lab. We followed them from the early instar caterpillars that we found today in the field, um, all the way up through their final instar, their pupa, and eventually we got to see the adult moth itself. I'm gonna zoom in on the images here and just show you some details. These are the balloon-like pitchers the caterpillars form that we saw today in the field. The tops have been closed, the caterpillar lives within this balloon and feeds on the inner surface of the leaf. This one's been completely sealed over by silk, which is classic of later instar caterpillars in new pitchers that they've moved to after overwintering. This one looks a lot more like the pitchers we saw in the field today. Here's the final instar caterpillar, so a few weeks on from what we saw in the field. The pupa that was formed in the neck of the pitcher. And the lovely adult moth, quite different from other looper moth adults very small, very colorful, and we've never seen the moth in the wild. We hope one day we'll get to moth light and bog-like habitats and see some new species in the field, but for now we get to rear them, see them, and release them. All right, so that concludes our first field adventure with you guys. Um, this is sort of a new thing for the Caterpillar Lab. We haven't done this before. Um, please let us know what you think, uh, whether you'd want to join us for other field excursions or learn how to rear caterpillars in the lab or maybe come along to one of our programs. Um, we're up for anything, and I do have to say we've got some time to kill these next couple of weeks here. So um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you get to see your own Xyrafax. Till next time, guys.